Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about 10 of the most in-demand tech jobs of 2019. Now, this list isn't really in, an, in any particular order. I took into account things like salary, growth rates, job security, things like that. So the goal of this video is to list the jobs and also talk a little bit about what each position entails, some of the skills you need, etc. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into specific salaries just because there's so many factors including experience, company, location, all that stuff. There's a lot of resources online if you want to kind of check out the average salary for each position. So the first job is a cybersecurity engineer and security is always at the forefront of priorities for any major tech company or any major any company at all. And a breach in security could be the downfall of a business. So it's something that's vital. It's something that there's always going to be a need for. Security engineers are professionals who protect computer and network systems from potential hackers and cyber attacks. This is a profession you probably need at least a bachelor's for. Um, if, you're, if this area interests you joining an organization like the Information uh, System Security Association or ISSA can help keep you up to date with trends in information security business. As far as salary, like I said, I don't really want to get into specifics, but it, I mean, it could be anywhere between 90K to 150K plus per year. But again, it's, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. So the next position is an AI machine learning engineer. AI, of course, is artificial intelligence. Um, AI and machine learning, probably the hottest thing right now. Automation is basically taking over. There's, there's a very high demand for it. Machine learning involves scaling data science algorithms to large data sets. You'll often work alongside data scientists who will kind of define the rules of engagement when it comes to a data set and communicating insights. Uh, you'll use a lot of analytic tools. You'll also need to, to know uh, usually languages like Python, C++, languages like that. If you're really good at math, algorithms, problem solving, this is probably the area I would recommend going into. It's one of, if not the hottest areas in tech, and you can make a, a ton of money uh, doing AI and machine learning, well over 200 grand per year in some cases and in some areas. So the next profession is a full stack web developer. This is kind of my wheelhouse. And if you're a subscriber to the channel, I would imagine that you're this is what you're going for or this is what you are. Um, full stack devs handle working on web projects on both the server side and the, the front end. Although in my experience, you, f it's, you seem to focus more on one side, depending on the company and the position you're working for. Um, you can make well over 100,000 per year and uh, you're usually working with languages like JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, Python, as well as databases, as well as frameworks on both the front end and the back end. Um, I don't think this profession is going anywhere unless the web all of a sudden goes away. Uh, one of the best things I think about this profession is that you can become really successful and get a really, really good job being self-taught where most of the other stuff on this list requires a college education. Of course, a college education is going to help you, but it is possible to be successful in this area without a degree. And I say this from experience. All right. So the next one is a data scientist. And a data scientist has actually been labeled the best job in America by Glassdoor for, I think, three years in a row now. And if you think about it, the most important thing to large tech companies, it's it's basically automation and data. So like AI and machine learning engineers, data scientists are in high demand. As far as what they do, they basically analyze and interpret um, complex data and statistics, and they consult businesses in decision making based on that data. They also work very closely with machine learning engineers who pretty much implement software based on that data and analytics. They use a lot of tools like um, a lot of Python based tools. They use platforms like Hadoop and Apache Spark, lots of data visualization tools, etc. Um, they also need to deal with unstructured data. So they basically take a, a complete and utter mess of data and make sense of it using these tools. Um, and this is another job for really analytical minds. And you can also make just a crap load of money being a data scientist. All right. So a DevOps engineer. Um, Basically, DevOps is is becoming increasingly popular. According to Indeed.com, DevOps jobs went from 1% in 2012 to 24% in 2017, and it's even higher now. DevOps can be a pretty broad profession. 
um, but they usually work closely with software engineers and system operators to oversee code releases. They do a lot with testing, deployment, maintenance. They also um, have experience with platforms like AWS and Azure. They're usually developers themselves. Um, they, they, they have other skill sets, though, aside from just software development. They deal with automation tools, systems, and IT operations. Uh, they usually know Unix inside and out. There's a ton of skills involved with being a, a DevOps professional, uh, more so than a developer, in my opinion, and it also pays very, very well. All right, so obviously smartphones and other mobile devices aren't going anywhere, so mobile developers are always in demand. I believe since 2016, mobile and tablet devices account for a higher percentage of internet usage than desktops. Um, by now, it's probably a lot, a lot more. Um, typically, you know, mobile developers are going to work with languages like Java, Swift, C Sharp. However, web developers are really getting into this space. It's almost a hybrid space because now we can build native mobile apps with technologies like JavaScript, like React Native. We can we have Flutter uh, and many other web-based frameworks and tools. And we're not just creating web wrappers, we're creating actual native applications. We also have progressive web apps, which are really catching on. I've, I've heard that progressive web apps are the future and not so much native apps that you would download from an app store. So web developer and mobile developer, that profession, it's, it's, they're really crossing over quite a bit. All right, so we talked about full stack development, which entails working on the server side with databases as well as the client side. Front end developers strictly focus and specialize on the client side. So they deal with APIs and data quite a bit. Um, the front end has become much, much more advanced than it used to be. We now have frameworks to create single page applications that can do routing and, and things that were traditionally done on the server. So front end workflows are much more intricate than they used to be. Um, front end development requires obvious, obviously knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but typically you'll also need to know a JavaScript front end framework like React, Vue, or Angular. And these frameworks are in really high demand for companies. Um, you may also do some stuff with UI, UX as well as you're dealing with browser output and user interfaces. From my experience, front end developers make a bit less than full stack, but you can still make quite a bit of money just sticking to the front end. All right, so next we have a cloud engineer. So job postings with the term cloud computing or cloud engineer, they've gone up about 27% since 2015. Many companies are moving from the traditional in-house servers to uh, a cloud-based infrastructure. And obviously they need people to plan, architect, and maintain that infrastructure. So you actually have a few different roles. You have cloud systems engineers, cloud security engineers, network engineers, and so on. And each position focuses on a specific type of cloud computing rather than the technology as a whole. And usually these engineers, they need to have skills with Linux, AWS, Docker, programming languages like Java, Python. Um, cloud engineers need a lot of the same skills that a DevOps engineer needs. Um, all right, so next we have a tech lead, and I guess you could you could put manager into this area as well. These are people that usually uh, lead or oversee software development teams. They're responsible for the overall planning and execution of software solutions to kind of meet the needs of a, of a project and of a business. They usually need experience in software development as well as agile practices, collaboration, things like that. Um, they should have experience with task management, priorities, and all that good stuff. So instead of just getting an, an assignment and executing it as a software developer would, they need to work more with the, the big picture of everything and work directly with the, the business needs, I guess. All right, so network and systems admins uh, probably have the lowest growth rate on this list, but it's something that's definitely needed as all companies need people to handle day-to-day -day operations and take care of their computer and network systems, including local area networks and wide area networks, network segments, intranets, and other data communication systems. It's not as sexy and high paying as say a cloud engineer architect, but it's something that's needed and it's something that isn't going anywhere. 
All right, guys, so those are the 10, or I should say 10 of the most in-demand jobs of 2019. And I think some of these areas overlap or some of these positions overlap. To me, it seems there's three main areas, and that's software or so software development, engineering, and so on, analytics, and infrastructure. So those are the three main things that are that seem to be really important these days. But if you guys have any other opinions on this, go ahead and leave a comment, leave a like if you like the video, and I'll see you next time.